In this video, we're going to be talking about Skeleton. Skeleton is really cool because I think we've seen it before. I know I see it on Facebook, although they don't use Chakra. Maybe they do. I'm not sure. But when I log in, I see when something is loading, looks like there's like this gray flashy stuff before it actually loads the content on into my timeline. And just like with progress, circular progress, you want to show the user something is incoming. And so skeleton is a way of showing, hey, there's going to be some stuff coming on the page in these certain sections, just give it a minute to load. So what we're going to do is look at the docs, and then it looks like we have about three examples for you all. So let's go ahead and get to reading. It says skeleton is used to display the loading state of some components. And if we come down here to the import, we could see we have skeleton, skeleton script, can't speak today or in any tutorial, it seems. Skeleton circle and skeleton text. And so we have a stack. You don't really need a stack here. It's just to organize. We have these three skeleton components with a height of 20 pixels. And you see them flash from like gray to, you know, virtually nothing for a moment. And if you haven't seen this exactly, I'm sure you've seen this kind of styling used, whether in, you know, CSS or however people do it these days to indicate, hey, an image or some text is about ready to be here. Now, this is just a general skeleton, so this is just bars right here. But I would implore you to use this when you have to go fetch data server side and bring it back for the user to, you know, eventually navigate. We could also come in here and we could wrap inside of skeleton more contents right here. So we have skeleton on the outside and notice you can't see any of this stuff in here. You can't see contents wrapped, won't be visible. And one interesting thing too is you notice that there's no, uh, up here there's height. There's no height here, but since there's two divs, it's kind of like thickened up here. Now I don't know if there's like a max height this thing, you know, stretches out to as you add more divs in here. But that's an interesting little detail that, you know, maybe if you have just a skeleton with one div, one short little line up here, but then you have this down here, you could signify that, you know, certain sizes of content are going to be loaded in certain areas on the page. Coming down here, we could see, yes, use uh, useful when fetching remote data. So we have use remote data, whatever, you know, hook this is that they have here. And so if there is an error, we're going to return that there's an error. But uh, we have this box and we have this is loaded is, uh, uh, sorry, the is loaded attribute in here or prop, I should say. And so this is going to be toggled on and off when something is loaded on in here. So we have this circle and a text skeleton right here. And I know we're kind of jumping from one example into another, but imagine yourself, you know, getting the data coming back. And when we do that, we could also simultaneously trigger that the info, this is loaded prop right here has been loaded. So we could set that to true. But in the case that, you know, maybe we don't want to use a regular skeleton, we could use specific shapes. So we have a circle and a text skeleton right here. And so we have this box just to keep it, you know, together, padded, uh, kind of bunched it up nice and tight here. We have the circle above flashing in and out with a size of 10. And then down below here, we have the skeleton text. Now, notice some interesting things here. We have number of lines, one, two, three, four. We have a spacing of four set between them right here. So this may be a good indicator that you may be getting a profile picture and maybe some kind of post coming in on here. And this could be a way to indicate, you know, the shape of the data coming on in rather than having continual lines. You could be more strategic with what is about to come on screen. We also could change the color here. So we have the start color, which is pink 500 and the end color, which is orange 500. The height is just 20 pixels right here, no big deal. But you can see it go between the orange and the pink, and you could customize this as you want to. Now, I do recommend using some colors that go with the theme of your website. You generally want to establish some color themes on your site. Otherwise, it might just be some giant artistic mess. And you kind of want some, like, you know, uh, flow and meaning to things, right? But that's another topic for another time. And so just like we were talking above up here, we have the Shocker UI is cool. So we have a span, Shocker UI is cool, but we could see it because it's inside the skeleton. 
And that's because is loaded is equal to true. If we go up here, we can see is loaded right now is the opposite of whatever this is. And so right now we could see that it would be, you know, possibly false right now. And so this is a, you know, a way I think use remote data, maybe a, a hook that they give you or just some custom one, for example, here. There's a lot of things in this library and I just can't memorize them all. But it's kind of nice to give a different example down here of once it's already loaded, you could show what's in here. But the same still goes for the circle and text skeleton right here. You could still come in and say that these things are loaded and you know, voila, your information is going to be right, right there for your user. So there's some props. We have some fade duration, size, you know, start color, variance, all that other cool stuff. So let's get into doing some coding, some examples, and I'll see y'all in just a moment. So we're going to do three examples of skeleton right here. And the first one is just going to be our basic one. We always like basic stuff. I'm going to create the skeleton and I'm going to have kind of the start and then the end colors and then change the height and we'll see how it looks in practice. So right now we just have this kind of giant block here. Let's put some, uh, some breaks in between these. So now we have these separated out. And I know it looks like because of how they loaded on in, they're all, there we go. Now it looks like they're fading in and out together here. If you notice, if we don't give it anything else, it kind of does this like white, gray, opacity fades in and out kind of stuff. And you could tell that something's loading. I know Facebook, I think, is really good with this here when it's attempting to load. It'll give you some kind of just basic, almost skeleton looking format. And you're going to know that, hey, um, I'm going to get, you know, a profile picture and some text and other junk. But you could also customize the start and the end colors. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's just make it the same for all of them, because why not? So now you have this like weird blue to orange kind of fade in and out right here. And maybe you want to make your own laser light, you know, trippy background show. I don't know. This is something that my dad would probably be the most proud of out of the entire series. And he would ask me to change it to varying shades of green. That's just a little about my father, though. But in the next section, what we're going to do is look at the skeleton circle text and how to show and um, show when something has been loaded. Alrighty, welcome back here. So we have this skeleton right here. Let's go and add a skeleton circle in here to show you what that looks like comparatively. And we also have a thing called skeleton text. So I know this doesn't look like the sexiest right here. We could probably add some layout stuff to make, you know, this circle appear maybe a little around here, but this is just a demo. So we have the skeleton circle right here. And this demo, as you probably would imagine, is it's, since it's a circle, you would think that there's some kind of um, icon, picture, something coming behind there that is not textual, right? And so we have the skeleton text right here. It's left to right, and you could tell that it's text. If it was just solid flat lines, you could think to yourself, well, what is that? But this would tip the reader off to be saying, oh, hey, I think some text is coming in. But what if we want to show that text? How do we do that? We come in here and we do this. Is loaded. Just like how I'm going to be tonight. No, I'm just joking. Maybe I am. I don't know. So we have is loaded, and it says sub to my channel and have a drink on me. And if we want to switch this to false, it comes back to being in this perpetually um, loading state here. So in the next example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to just the pure skeleton example. And I'm actually going to play a little bit with the fade duration and speed because as these things move in and out with their colors here, you could toggle that a little bit. So I'll see you all in a second. All right, welcome back everyone. And in this last example, we're just gonna make a bunch of skeletons that are relatively all the same, but we're gonna play with their fade duration and speed a little bit. So 
So now we have these two right here. And we got a break. I'm not sure I really need this break right here. I'll take this out. So we have these two lines right here. So let's play with the fade duration here. And what does this do? It says the fade in duration in seconds. So let's change this one up here to four. And let's try changing it to 10. Let's reset this. And as you can see here, it, it's like, to me, at least in my opinion, it's kind of like, uh, okay, because it looks still incredibly similar to the fade duration down below. It still, likes they're moving, still looks like they're moving very much in sync. So let's try adding the speed attribute to this and seeing if we could, you know, change it here. And what does speed do? Let's see here. It says the animation speed in seconds. So let's change this to one. So now we see that there's a discernible difference here. So if you're going to play with the fade duration and, and speed, maybe the speed may be a bit more, I guess, useful in this case. If we wanted to do 100 seconds, we see this thing is like in this perpetual middle state here. Um, because, yeah, that's the speed has been changed greatly. We come back to nine. We can see that it changes a little bit here. I personally wouldn't really touch the speed or the fade duration. I don't know what the overall benefits would be. I think the start end color are a bit more, um, I think, meaningful, especially with the basic um, fade duration and speed coming on down here. And even if you don't want to use color and just keep it gray, that's fine as well. But these are some of the attributes you could use when working with the skeleton and all of its other awesome components. And uh, if you like what I'm doing, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.